Chris, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, the reference to Jesus in Josephus, the first century Jewish historian, uh, has created a lot of controversy. I mean, people like Christopher Hitchens, Michel Onfray, and plenty of others say it's a complete forgery, the mention of Jesus. Which one do they mean? What do you mean? Well, there are two. There's one reference, a very brief one, in Josephus Jewish Antiquities, Book 20, which simply says, a man named James, the brother of Jesus who was called the Christ, was put on trial in Jerusalem. Now, that's all it says. It's just a passing reference because it's heard of Jesus' brother and references him to his more famous brother. But that's all it says. And there's no serious question that that's a historical reference and that Josephus really wrote it. No historian suggests that one is forged. Yeah, so when people refer to the Josephus passage uh, being a forgery, they, they mean the passage that comes earlier in Josephus' work, don't they? Yes, the second passage is here in Book 18 of Josephus' Jewish Antiquities, and he wrote this somewhere in the 70s or 80s AD. It says, About this time there lived Jesus, a wise man, if indeed one ought to call him a man. Now, that's where historians' ears prick up because that Josephus should describe Jesus as a wise teacher of some kind is completely plausible. But then to add, if one ought to call him a man, oh, that's a clue. Some Christian who is copying, some monk copying this manuscript in the medieval period somewhere has said, a wise man, oh no, that's not good enough, if it's right to call him a man. Josephus, or the scribe, goes on, he was one who did surprising deeds and was a teacher of many people who accept the truth gladly. Now, that's again an entirely historically plausible description of Jesus. It doesn't say he was the son of God. It doesn't say he was doing great miracles, just surprising deeds which leave some question open. He won over many Jews and many of the Greeks. Well, no early Christian is going to say that because Jesus during his lifetime, of course, didn't. But Josephus may have thought that. He was the Messiah. Most historians think what Josephus really said was he claimed to be the Messiah or he was called the Messiah. But the monk copying the manuscript went, oh, no, 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 he was the Messiah. And so those words got into the manuscripts. Then it goes on. When Pilate, upon hearing him accused by the men of highest standing among us, had condemned him to be crucified, well, there's no problem with that. Indeed, I mean, would Christians say that the people responsible for Jesus' death were men of highest standing? Clearly, they wouldn't want to think that at all. Um, those who had in the first place come to love him did not give up their affection for him. On the third day, he appeared to them restored to life. Josephus simply wouldn't have said that. He was not a Christian. He was a Jew. So that's, that's doctored. For the prophets of God had prophesied these and countless other marvellous things about him. Again, final sentence, and the tribe of the Christians so called after him has still to this day not disappeared. Well, that's entirely credible. So what we have is a basic underlying core of what Josephus probably wrote, plus annotations by a Christian scribe, which have simply been copied into the manuscript. Now, some people who, who aren't used to this idea uh, would think any tampering with, with a passage makes the whole passage inadmissible. How do you respond to that? Well, historians are always stuck with incomplete and inconclusive evidence. What we've got is some material that sounds very much like Josephus' normal style, sounds totally credible as a report of what Josephus could have said, and other passages which are clearly not. What also strikes me is the other passage in Book 20 mentions Jesus purely in passing as the so-called Christ, presuming that you've already heard about him. But that is only likely to be true because two books earlier in Book 18, Josephus has already mentioned him, though again, really only in passing. So what in a nutshell is the consensus amongst historians with respect to this passage? The consensus is simply that there is a historical nucleus, but that it's been edited by a Christian scribe somewhere in the 8th, 9th century or possibly a little bit earlier, and that it's reasonably easy to pick which bits are Josephus and which bits are the scribe. Thank you very much. My pleasure.